So today we're going to be creating the PRD for the web app that we're building out. A PRD is short for product requirements document. How I view a PRD is that it is like kind of like a blueprint or a roadmap of what the web app or the feature that you want to build out should be. A PRD will contain the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the web app that you're building out. The reason that you want to create a PRD is that if you're working on a project that has multiple teams working on it, you want to make it so that whether you're a designer, you're an engineer, you're in finance, or if you're in legal, all these stakeholders or people part of the project they can refer and read this document to be aligned on the vision of what needs to be built out. By being on the same page, everyone can break off into their own groups and work independently or collaborate with each other. So for example, if you're an engineer and you read the PRD, you'll be thinking about tech solutions on how to build out the project. If you're a designer, you'll be coming up with Figma mockups on what the web app should look like. If you're legal, you need to figure out the terms and conditions and any legal problems that can come up. And if you're marketing, you want to figure out the content strategy and the go-to-market strategy. So a PRD was set at the top of the food chain. And from that PRD, other documents from other departments of the project will come about from reading that PRD. So here I have a list of sections that I would want to include in the PRD. This list comes from just personal experience of reading PRDs while I was a software engineer at Amazon. But let's say you've never created a PRD before or you don't have experience reading them. How would you know what to include? I'm going to show you how I would go about doing this. And we're going to be using ChatGPT to kind of learn and understand more what a PRD actually is. And just for some context, if you're a software engineer or if like you're a designer or something like that, typically you won't be creating PRDs yourself. You'll more likely be reading PRDs that other people create. This is because when you work in a big tech company or you work in a team, you're going to have a product manager that's dedicated job is to create the PRD. But since you're a team of one and building your own project, you're gonna have to create the PRD yourself. So this will be practice for me as well because I've never written one, I've only read them. So I'm going to go to ChatGPT here to see what is exactly is a PRD. So in ChatGPT, you can create projects where you can store all your conversations regarding a specific topic. And one thing that I want to play around with is that you can add files to this project. So once I create the PRD for this, I'll upload the PRD into ChatGPT here and now ChatGPT will have context around the app that I want to build. So this is why um, I talk about it's important to plan because you want to plan twice and implement once. You want to be very detailed on what you want to build out because like, let's say you're working on a team. You don't want to constantly repeat yourself. There's a saying where if you have to explain something more than two times, you're better off creating a document and referring people to that. During my career at Amazon, there have been so many times where I had to explain the same thing to four different people. And at that point, I really wish that I could just refer them to a document. This is going to be important because when you use AI and ChatGPT, you can think of AI as like a coworker. If you're able to write things down once in detail, you would feed that document to ChatGPT and the AI, and they have full context of what you want to build out. And the more detailed that you are, better answers that AI and ChatGPT can give you. This is why I want to focus on creating a really good PRD. All right, so I'm going to get ChatGPT this prompt. So I'm just asking, I'm creating a PRD for a web app that I want to build out. And I want it to explain to me what a PRD is and give me a list of sections that I should include. So let's see what I get back here. Detailed document that outlines the purpose, features, so the who, what, when, where, how. PRD helps you save, organize, and focus. Yep. All right, sections to include. Introduction, you got the overview, purpose, objectives, key goals, and success. Scope, what features should be included in initial release, features excluded or first later versions. Okay. User stories and use cases. So scenarios explaining how users will interact. There's this term called functional requirements and non-functional requirements. This is going to come up if you're working as a software engineer. Functional requirements are what the product owner wants. So it'll be like, I want to be able to upload an image. I want to be able to log in. I want to be able to see my sales of all the books that I've sold so far. Non-functional requirements, you can think of these as more technical requirements. Stuff that the product owner isn't thinking about, but you as a software engineer and a tech person should be aware of. About. So let's take the example of showing someone their sales. You want to make sure that you have security in place so that only the author of a book can see the sales of their book. You want to make it where me as a random person can hit an API and view this person's sales. That will be a security and a data issue. Or like let's say you're building some sort of stock app, right? Where you're getting real-time updates from the stock market. One of your requirements is that you need to be very, very performant. A five second delay could be the difference maker between a thousand dollars and a hundred thousand dollars. So in that case, performance, low latency would be a non-functional requirement. Um, user interface, user experience, your tech specifications, development timeline, whatever chat should be gave me almost similar um, to the sections that I have, I think this would be a good starting point to work off of. So now that we know the sections that we want to include in our PRD, I kind of want to read some example PRDs to get a better understanding and feeling of the language that I should use. So once again, we are going to be using ChatGPT. So I gave ChatGPT this prompt here. I want to read an example PRD 
For an app that tracks a user's lift, it can record a history of their exercises, weights, sets, and reps, and also visualize the progress. Here's an example PRD, intro, lift tracker is a web app designed to help fitness enthusiasts. Purpose, to give simple intuitive ways for users to log their workouts. Target audience, objectives, scope, user auth, workout login, user review, progress evaluation. As a user, I want to log my workouts and details. As a user, I want to visualize trends. I like the user stories. Before I move on, I do want to touch upon what a user story is. When you're booting out a project or a feature, a product owner or a product manager, they will create a user story, which is just a sentence explaining what they want out of the web app. It typically follows as a blink, I want to blink so then that I can blink. As a user, I want to log my workout details so then that I can track my progress. So when it comes to creating user stories, you don't want to include technical details on how to implement that user story. You want it to be generic enough so then that all stakeholders of the project, whether you're an engineer, you're a designer, you're a data analyst, you're in marketing, all that stuff, you can read the user story and understand, okay, what is my job here in order to accomplish this user story? So in this case here, as an engineer, I need to come up with what are the databases that I need to include? What are the APIs that I need? And then if you're a designer, how do I want this to look like? Should this be a drop down? Should this be a text input? Should I be able to give freeform inputs and all that stuff? If you're in legal, you want to be worried about how are we storing this data? Is it going to be private on your phone? Is it going to be stored in a database? What's the retention policy on the data that we can store? Are we serving users in the EU? Do we need to be data compliant with these regions? All of these stakeholders have different thought processes and start to brainstorm how can they tackle and implement the solution for the story. So that is what a user story is. So let's go on into reading um, the PRD more. We have our UI, UX, tech specs, we have our tech stack, depth timeline, risks and assumptions, last year. All right, so this is a pretty solid example PRD to give me some inspiration. So let's go ahead and start creating a PRD for our own web app. All right, so this is the introduction portion of my PRD. I'm going to name my project Visual Utils. I haven't officially come in with a name yet, but I'm just gonna stick with this in the meantime. Visual Utils is a web app designed to help computer vision students visualize visual computing concepts. This app allows users to upload media onto the web app, and then you can perform any visual computing technique on the image. So the objective is that it's going to be a one-stop shop to learn and visualize all visual computing concepts. Here we have my audience. So I have two target audiences in mind. The main one being computer science and visual computing students looking to either learn more about visual computing or just have an understanding of how it works. And then the second being creatives that need to utilize visual computing concepts in their art. So whether that be filters, image cropping, image resizing, creatives can use that to their own benefit. So the next part we're gonna be talking about is PR FAQ, which is short for press release, frequently asked questions. So how I think of a PR FAQ is that it is a mock news article about the release of your web app or the feature that you're building. So whenever a product owner or product manager creates a PR FAQ, it forces them to have a 10,000 foot view of the thing that you're building out. It forces you to simplify the explanation of the thing that you're releasing to the public. Because you're so caught down in like the nitty gritty details and the technical implementations of everything, you kind of get lost in the context of what it's like to not have all of that knowledge. It forces you to take a step back and think about the very end goal of what you want to launch. By figuring out the press release of what you're launching, it forces you to have clarity on the thing that you're building. By having that clarity, you can then work backwards to be like, okay, this is what I want. Now this is how you build it. Now this is the design. This is the plan. This is the PRD. By working backwards, you understand the end goal so that when you're planning everything out, you can have a structured streamlined vision of, okay, these are the steps I need to work on so that I can get to this PR FAQ. So from my experience at Amazon, this is a common thing that a lot of product owners um, do when they need to build out a new project or a feature. And I've read a few of these and I think PR FAQs are kind of specific to Amazon, but I think it's a really good exercise to do for when you're building out your own web app. So I've never written a PR FAQ before, and even I don't have a clear vision of what I want the press release to be about um, for this web app. You're gonna see me think in real time on the PR FAQ. Well, I did say that like my target audience is visual computing students. So I guess in my PR FAQ, I want it to be that like, this app has been recommended by professors to their students or something like, or professors use this web app to help visualize and explain concepts to their students. A lot of top universities would use this tool to help teach your students. Then the next part's gonna be a bit ambitious, but just hear me out for a second. Because this tool is focused towards computer science students and visual computing students, wouldn't it be crazy that like, because this app has gained so much traction, a university or educational platform bought out my website. I got paid out 
um, a lump sum of money so then that I can have my platform be hosted on this educational tech platform, for example. So it could be like, why is Pup has sold this app to blank for X, X, X amount of money because of the high ratings that professors have using this app and stuff like that. While that might not happen, it is a very good end goal of what you want to work towards. So I also touched on the fact I want creatives to be part of the target audience, but it would be cool if like I can have some sort of um, subscription or user base with this web app. Maybe one of the tools that I have, maybe it costs a lot of money, but a lot of creatives find a lot of value in it, right? Whether it be like a filter or some sort of effect with the media. In the press release, I want to say this web app has XYZ amount of monthly recurring revenue because these XYZ creatives have a subscription for it. So with these three ideas, let's see what we can do here. To help us create a PR FAQ, let's go to ChatGPT to actually help us. So here, I just say I'm creating a PRD for a web app that I'm building. This is what I have so far. So I just do this to give ChatGPT context into what I have. I'm going to copy paste the ideas that I have for my PR FAQ and asked it to write it for me. Shoots is a web app. Professors, creatives, why is it valuable? Professors at top university. Simplicity and power provides hands-on way to demonstrate concepts. Book success has it achieved, adopted leading universities. So by wise pub to XYZ company generates this amount of money. Square prominent creative. What is the pricing model? Free tier, premium tier. What's next? Plan and tool set. I think this is pretty good so far. So let me just <laughs> copy paste all that. So now you may be asking like, okay, this guy's just using ChatGPT for everything. Like this guy isn't legit. And to your point, partly true. But the reason I'm okay using ChatGPT here is because whatever ChatGPT wrote for me and whatever AI wrote would have been way better than what I would have written by myself. Because I'm a software engineer, my strong suit isn't in writing PRDs and writing PR FAQs and writing all this shit down. But I do see the appeal of understanding what it's like to be a product manager and writing a PRD out for yourself. With AI, it's going to help you do that. And I'm building out this project. Writing the PR FAQ isn't going to help me when I'm building it out. What it is going to help me later on down the road when I kind of forget the North Star of what I'm trying to build out, the pure FAQ is going to be there to help me be back aligned with the vision. Now, obviously you want to play to your strengths and you don't want to use AI for everything. I feel like it's okay to use AI when it's to support a weak part of your skill set. I at least have a high level understanding of what a pure FAQ is. If I needed to, I could, you know, write all this out by myself and actually learn it. But for the context of this project specifically, let's use AI where we can. For the scope of this project, I want to have um, a few different things. I want the user to be able to upload media, so an image or a video. I want to be able to transform the media with any visual computing concept. And I want them to have the option to download it as well. So those are going to be the four features that I want, at least in the MVP. And now that we have the scope of that project, I can create user stories out of it. And it's going to be, as a user, I want to upload media so that I can apply visual computing techniques on it. And then the second one being, as a user, I want to view the transform media so that I can download it. And already from these two steps, my engineering brain is already firing off. I'm thinking, how do I upload the media, right? Do I need to store the image somewhere? Maybe S3, object storage, something like that. How do I apply the visual computing technique on it? Right? Do I want this to be client side? Do I want this to be server side? Do I want this to be serverless? Even as a front end person, now you're thinking, I want to upload the media, right? Should this be a drag and drop thing? How should I format the layout so then that I can see the original and then the transform media. How should a user experience be like? Just from these two user stories, different areas and domains of the project are brainstorming in their head. I am an engineer or I'm a designer or I'm in finance. How does my role fit in with these user stories? So when it comes to non-functional requirements, different things that come to mind. Thinking like secure, do I store the images in a public or private bucket? How long should we store these images? If I'm not doing user authentication, if let's say the user uploads an image, but then refreshes it, I want to force them to upload the image again. So in that case, do we even need to store the image or the video in our S3 bucket for a long The retention policy, I could probably delete it after an hour or something. So another non-functional requirement that I thought of was the app needs to support concurrent uploads and transformation. So then like, let's say 100 different people upload an image at the same time. I want it so then that all 100 people, they'll get their media results back instantaneously. I don't want to make it where if 100 people uploads their thing at the same time, that they have to wait in a queue for their turn. I want it to where if 100 people uploads it at once, we will perform all of the transformation concurrently at the same time. So one thing I am worried about is because I'm building in public, there's always a chance that there's a bad actor that will go to my website to try to mess with me and maybe try to DDoS me, try to raise my AWS bill. So I need to have some preventative measures to make sure that my bill is low 
and that I'm not prone to the attacks like these. One thing I want to implement is that I want to prevent uploads over a certain amount of memory. This is just so then that a person can't just upload like a one terabyte file to my S3 bucket or something like that. That'd be crazy if you do that, but like, I don't even know if that's even possible, but like, and then the second one being, I want to rate limit the amount of uploads that a person can do. So I want to prevent maybe like a bot attack where they will hit an endpoint like a million times at once. And then that I have a million objects in my S3 bucket. So I need to implement some sort of rate limiting in terms of the number of uploads that they can do. So whether that's like an AWS solution that has it, or maybe I need to implement my own rate limiting. Um, that is something I do want to implement now rather than later. The reason for this is that like once you get into more advanced visual computing techniques, the amount of memory and CPU and time it takes to perform um, those techniques gets very large. Because of that, I really need to make sure that I have rate limiting in place so that my build isn't going through the roof. So another section that you can add to your PRD are KPIs or key performance indicators. How I think about KPIs are that they're like the goals and the metrics that you want to hit for when you launch an app or a new feature. So using my app, for example, how do I know if people are using the website or not? So things that we could track are how many people visit my website, how many people are uploading an image, and how many people are downloading the image. So number of page visits could signify that our marketing strategy is working and that we're, we're pushing traffic into our website. Number of uploads could signify whether or not our website is easy to understand and to use. If we have a bad user experience or no call to action, the number of uploads compared to the number of page visits could tell us something about that. If we have a low download to upload ratio, that could signify that the transformation that we're doing on the image isn't worthwhile for people to download it. If the number of downloads is high, that means we're providing value and that people are downloading it for their own personal use. So that's what I mean by key performance indicators. There are metrics used to determine how successful your product is. And with that, I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about regarding a PRD. At the beginning of the video, we started with nothing. And then we talked about what a PRD is, what are the sections that should be included. And after going through this exercise, we've answered our who, what, when, where, why, and how in terms of the web app that we're building. And with that vision and that clarity, in future videos, we're going to be creating a mockups for what the web app should look like, the tech design, the timelines, and the launch and the marketing strategy. Everything that we do from here on out, whether it's designing or implementation, is going to stem from this PRD. So that's why it's important to take the time to plan things out and create a PRD so that you have an understanding and a clear vision of what you want to build out for your web app. And with that, I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.